Hi, and welcome back to Age of Noob. The Elephant Archers will receive a sizable buff in the upcoming August patch, but how viable will they now be against their traditional ranged counters of Skirmishers, Genitors, and Camel Archers? Well, let's find out. Before we begin, let's do a super quick recap. Prior to the Dynasties of India DLC, the Elephant Archers used to be a singular, unique unit of course, with a creation time of 25 seconds from the castle, a cost of 100 food and 70 gold, a movement speed of 0.8, HP of 280 for standard and 330 for elite version, pierce armor of 3 and cavalier archer armor of negative 2, and an accuracy of 100%. That said, after the DLC, these values have all been changed. Although their creation speed was nerfed to 34 seconds, they can be created in the archer ranges now, so they're definitely easier to mass. Their cost, however, was reduced to 90 food and 70 gold, their movement speed increased to 0.9, which with husbandry can outrun the archer line, their HP reduced to 230 for standard and 280 for the elite version, their pierce armor reduced from 3 to 2, their cavalry archer armor reduced even further from negative 2 to negative 7, and their accuracy decreased from 100% to 75% for the standard and 85% for the elite version. They also used to have bonus damage against buildings and walls, but that was mostly irrelevant anyway. As discussed in my August patch video, some of these values are getting tweaked again, as their food cost is reduced by another 10 food to 80 food and 70 gold, and their cavalry archer armor is partially reverted back to negative 4. They will still take more bonus damage than when they did pre-Dynasties of India DLC, but a 3 bonus damage negation is nothing to scoff at. Okay, that was all just unit stats, so let's take a look at how well they do in practice with these changes. Although the most common ranged unit you'll see countering your Elephant Archers through their Cavalry Archer Armor class is the Skirmisher, the Genitor and the Camel Archer also deal additional damage against them, so we'll test all of these three units. Before we dive into the tests, here's also a quick recap of all Elephant Archer variations per civilization, as some of them lack upgrades and others have civilization specific bonuses. Starting with the Bengalis, they have full blacksmith upgrades, have both husbandry and bloodlines at the stable, but they do lack thumb ring from the archer range. That said, they do have a castle and unique technology called Paix, which increases their attack speed by 20%, and they also have a civilization bonus of receiving 25% less bonus damage, which is significant. The Dravidians have full blacksmith upgrades, but they lack both husbandry and bloodlines from the stable, and they also lack Perthian tactics in the archer range. They do have a castle and unique technology called Medical Crops, which heals their elephants 20 HP per minute. Most importantly, their civilization bonus of skirms and elephants attacking 25% faster is pretty strong. And finally, the Grijaras. They lack the final archer armor upgrade in the blacksmith, have full upgrades in the stable, but also lack Parthian tactics in the archer range. That said, they of course benefit from the Kshatriyas technology in the castle age to shave off one fourth of their food cost. And they do receive an additional four melee armor in the imperial age with the help of frontier guards unique technology. And finally, their team bonus which also applies to them of course, helps them mass their elephants 25% faster. If it was hard to follow what all of these technologies translate to from a raw stats perspective, here's a quick table for the Castle Age specifically to summarize it all. Gujaras have the cheapest elephants and the easiest to mass, the Dravidians have the squishiest and slowest but the fastest firing elephants, and the Bengalis' lack of shot accuracy stands out. Alright, with the fundamentals out of the way, let's get into the tests now, starting with the Castle Age. We'll first look at the current patch engagements, then compare it with the upcoming August changes. Also, I will provide a summary of our findings towards the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that and for some rules of thumb. Given that they're much more expensive than skirmishers, all elephants of course win their 1v1s currently. The Bengali elephant survives with 35% of its HP, the Dravidian with 48%, and the Gurjara with 38%. Now that we know the raw power comparison, let's look at it from an equal resources lens. Three Bengali elephants get crushed by eight elite skirmishers, with 92% of the HP for skirmishers still remaining. The Dravidian elephants do slightly better, but they also get crushed at 72% of the skirmishers' HP remaining. The Gurjara's cheaper cost didn't help much either, with 89% of the HP still remaining on the skirmishers. In short, don't engage against skirmishers in the castle age regardless of your civilization. In the upcoming patch, the numbers do look better, but they're still all losing engagements. Enemy HP still remains at 65%, 56%, and 55% for the Bengalis, Dravidians, and Gurjaras respectively. Hence, even after the new buffs, do not fight skirmishers in the Castle Age. But do things change when we move to post-Imperial Age? Well, the Bengalis still lose convincingly in the current patch, as the skirmishers still have 57% of their HP. The Dravidians and the Gurjaras also perform similarly, with 59% and 58% of the enemy HP remaining respectively. In other words, regardless of the different unique upgrades each civilization gets, they perform almost identically to one another in post-imperial age against skirmishers. 
When we test again using the upcoming August patch, I'll be damned to say that the Bengali elephants actually do win the engagement with equal resources, with 2 out of the 4 elephants surviving the battle against 8 skirmishers. This is the first time we do see elephants come out on top against its range counters. The Dravidian elephants barely lose their engagement with only 10% of the HP remaining on the skirmishers. I ran it a few times to check and it's safe to say that it's almost an equal engagement. That said, I wish I could say the same for the Gurjaras, but their elephants lose convincingly with 44% of the enemy HP remaining. Moving on to the Janitors and the Castle Age, the Bengalis lose badly against the Janitors as well. Even with an improper start, the Janitors still have 80% of the HP remaining. The numbers are 80% against Dravidian elephants and 78% against the Gurjaras. Regardless of the civilization, it's pretty one-sided. When we test again with the August patch, the Bengalis lose with 65%, the Dravidians with 62% and the Gurjaras with 58%. In the current patch, the numbers are slightly better but still bad in the Imperial Age, with 74% for Bengalis, 70% for Dravidians and 70% again for the Gujaras. With the new patch however, the Bengalis put up a much better fight with the enemy HP at only 29% remaining. The Dravidians almost level the playing field with less than 10% and the Gujaras die with 31% of the enemy HP remaining. These numbers are almost twice as good as before but still not good enough. In other words, despite the buffs, Janitors are still excellent counters to the Elephant Archers. And finally, the Camel Archers. When we test against the Camel Archers in the Castle Age, the Bengalis lose with 61% of the HP remaining, the Dravidians with 51% and the Gujaras with 36%. With the new patch, the Bengalis lose with 36%, but the Dravidians just barely lose the fight at 70% of the enemy HP remaining. The Gujaras also lose this engagement at 30%. In the current patch for the Imperial Age, the Bengalis lose the engagement with 51%, 60% for the Dravidians and 36% for the Gujaras. With the new patch, however, the Bengalis secure another win with one elephant standing. The Dravidians, on the other hand, are hit or miss. Sometimes they won based on RNG and sometimes lost. If I left to RNG, the camels usually barely survive with less than 10% HP remaining. The Gujaras lose again at 25% of enemy HP still remaining as well. Okay, those were a lot of percentages, so let's summarize our findings in a neat table first, then discuss a few rules of thumb to follow. In the current patch, Elephant Archers lose awfully in both the Castle and Imperial Age against all of these three units. The only exception are the post-Imperial Age fully upgraded Dravillian Elephant Archers versus the fully upgraded Camel Archers, and they could barely hold on. In every other scenario, the engagement is so one-sided that you always have to run away. In the new patch, however, we get our first wins, as the Bengali Elephant Archers win against both the Skirmishers and the Camel Archers in post-Imperial Age Wars. The Dravidians are also able to level the playing field against all three units in post-imp as well, and overall, all other losing engagements sting a lot less than they did before. Hence, our first rule of thumb is very obvious. In the current patch, never take a head-on engagement against any of the Skirmishers, Janitors, or Camel Archers unless you have a significant numbers advantage. The only exception to this rule are the Dravidians against the Camel Archers as mentioned before, in which they can at least hold their own. Second, the Bengalis in post-Imperial Age surprisingly do win against Skirmishers and Camel Archers in the upcoming patch. Now, I'm not saying you should train Elephant Archers to counter skirmishes in the late game as army composition is influenced by many other factors. But just know that it's a cost-efficient engagement if you ever find yourself in one. So definitely, don't be afraid of skirmishers in the late game as the Bengalis with your Elephant Archers. Furthermore, once Dravidians reach the post-imperial age, they simply do not have range unit counters anymore, as they trade roughly evenly with all of their three range unit counters in the late game. Once again, overall army composition matters here, but this means that you shouldn't worry like before when the enemy fields any of these three units to target your elephant archers. And finally, regardless of pre or post patch, the Gurjara elephants just suck against their ranged counters, even when we do take the reduced cost into the equation. There simply is no scenario in which Gurjara elephants are a good idea to field if you don't have a reliable answer to any of these three counter units fielded by the enemy. Of course, I'm not too worried about this as the Gurjaras already are a very strong civilization that do not need another buff, and they definitely have units that can counter skirmishers, janitors, and camel archers reliably. Well, that's all you need to know about the upcoming changes to the elephant archers and how they affect their engagements against their counters. They situationally can hold their own or even win now in post-imperial age with equal resources, so be careful of that in the late game if you're up against them. And if you've enjoyed this type of analytical content, be sure to like and subscribe to Age of Noob for more awesome content. As always, thanks for watching everyone, be more brave with your elephant archers in the late game of the upcoming patch, and see you all in the next one.